This is the real secret of life, to be completely engaged with what you are doing in the here and now. And instead of calling it work, realize it's play. Oftentimes people go, okay, here's really what I want to do, and this is what I'm trying to accomplish. And then they see all these other things that other people are doing, and then they, they kind of see that as like a grab bag, and they're like, I want a little of this, and a little of this, and a little of this, and I want it all at the same time. And that's not really possible, you know? You can't play five sports at the same time. You gotta pick one, you gotta special. Maybe you can do two, but you probably can't do five, right? Number one is that you need to really get amped up about why that goal matters to you. Because once you know why the goal matters, that's gonna be that thing that gives you meaning and purpose, that turns into a passion, that allows you to show up and keep doing it when you're bored. What would you like to do? If you don't like what you're doing, and you don't like where you are, and you don't like your relationships, and you don't like X, Y, or Z, what do you want? What do you like? And then you gotta be able to add passion to it to activate that thing and make that dream a reality. And to find that meaning and to develop it, to create meaning in our lives, we have to set an intention and we have to pursue that intention. Start small, know what you want, get out of bed, get after it, set rules for yourself, follow those rules. You have to understand that you're not your own servant, so to speak. You're someone that you have to negotiate with and you're someone that you want to present the opportunity of having a good life to. And that's hard for people because they don't like themselves very much. Once you discover your purpose, it's your job to live with passion. That's when you're passionate. That's when you're ready to go to that next level. You determine your legacy. It's up to you. Your legacy is in your hands as long as you can breathe, as long as you can hear, as long as you can see. If you're passionate and driven and focused in what you do, if you're really good at it, people will take notice. That's basically it. So those dreams and goals that some of you have that may seem larger than life, good. That's what I want you to go after. And don't let the fear of the failure, don't let the fear of perfection hold you back. You won't be perfect. You will make mistakes. But I promise you this, you're never going to know if you can sink or if you can swim unless you jump in the water. So continue to fight for it. Continue to believe in yourself. Hold on to the possibilities. Get away from the negativity. Push yourself. Believe in yourself. And go as far as you can. I will remember that my choices create my reality. My responses create my outcome. I will speak with compassion. I will stay true to my heart. See, whatever you decide to do, look at it and find out what is it that I have that I could bring to the table that can begin to enable me to ensure that I could be successful in this. Where is the opening for you? There's room for you out here. Out here in the arena called life, there's room for you to come out and live your dream. Don't allow but to keep you in the corner or keep you up in the bleachers, looking at life, being a spectator, not being a participant, making a difference in life. I believe that all of us came here with something. All of us showed up to give something and that nobody, but nobody's going to give that service that you have to give. No one's going to produce your product. No one's going to write your book. No one's going to open your academy. No one's going to begin to create your daycare with a special curriculum to help to cultivate the high self-esteem in our children. That's your idea. And if you don't bring your idea out here, when you die, all of us will suffer because we've been deprived of your genius because you allowed but to keep you in the bleachers and not pursuing your greatness. You take it to your grave with you. And that's what most people do. Now here's the simple formula for setting goals. It goes like this. A, work on your goals. That's step one, work on them. And I put the word work there deliberately. Setting goals is plain hard work. I don't want to kid you. We haven't come here tonight to kid each other. It's work, I know it's work. That's why a lot of people just let it slide. It's work. Many people work hard on their job, but they don't work hard on their future.
they just let that slide. And the work involved is making plans. I know most people don't. I understand that. But don't let that be you. Guy says, well, yeah, you work where I work, but the time you struggle home, it's late. You've got to eat a bite of supper, watch a little TV, get to bed. You can't sit up half the night. Plan, plan, plan. And the guys be good worker, hard worker, sincere. But you've got to be better than sincere, working hard. You've got to be better than a good worker. You've got to be a good planner. Somebody once wisely said, the people who fail to plan are planning to fail. Well said. So work on your goals. Here's step two. Write your goals down. That's so important. I teach my staff around the world, put your goals in your journal. Because one of the major people you want to study is yourself. So here's the list of goals I put together three weeks ago. Here's the list of goals I put together two years ago. Here's some of the changes I made, rearrangement of my priorities. I scratched these off, I put these on, I've gotten these. Study your accomplishments, study what your desires are. Put them on paper, write them down. Here's another reason for writing your goals down. It shows you're serious about doing better. And to do better, you gotta get serious. You don't have to be grim, but you must be serious. Everybody hopes things will get better. Everybody hopes. Poor people hope. That ought to tell you something. It means the future does not get better by hope. It gets better by plan. In studying warfare and battles over the centuries, I have always been fascinated by the situation where a smaller force defeated a numerically superior force. In every case, what I discovered was that the numerically smaller force was far better organized, more methodical, and more orderly in its plan of attack and execution than was the larger, more disorganized force. By the same token, an ordinary person with a system or recipe for problem solving can run circles around highly intelligent or well-educated people who throw themselves at their problems without a method or process for solving them. Always be sure to think on paper. Write things down. There is something that happens between the brain and the hand when you write. You get a greater sense of clarity and understanding with regard to the issues involved. You think better. Your perception is sharper. You actually become smarter and more creative by the very act of writing everything down as you go along and before you make a decision. One of the most important parts of your personal philosophy should revolve around the development of options. The rule is you are only as free as your well-developed alternatives. If your goal is to be happy, successful and free, you must have choices. There must be more than one thing that you can do in every situation. You can never allow yourself to be trapped with only one course of action open to you. From the time you take your first job, make your first investment, or embark on any part of life, you should immediately begin to, to develop an alternative to that if something should go wrong. Always be looking for ways to use your creativity to add value by doing things faster, better, cheaper, or easier in some way. Just as the word deserve comes from the Latin roots, de and service, which mean from service, you should always be looking for ways to deserve greater rewards from serving your customers better in some way. In the final analysis, as a member of society, as a player, in our economic system, your riches and rewards will come from your ability to serve other people better than your competitors. Use your intelligence and your creativity every single day to find ways to make yourself more valuable to your company, your industry, and your world. This is the true hallmark of personal genius. 